While Drakenfest is rated a family-friendly experience, there are adult areas with adult themes. My Personal Adventure contains mature themes, descriptions of conflict, and strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi everybody! Oh. My. Gosh. So. Drakenfest US. 2022, it happened. And I have to say, it was incredible. It was actually incredible in every sense of the word. I, what, I am so proud of the team and I'm so proud of being involved. It was frankly, completely and totally fucking awesome. <laughs> it really was. Um, I, I want to, oh God, there's so, there's so much to start with. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna say this first off. Drakenfest is a massive experience. It's, it's huge. And there's no way on earth you can do everything. Like if you think that you're gonna go to Drakenfest and experience all the aspects of Drakenfest in like a year, you're you're wrong. Like you're just you're just not going to. And I think like even myself, I try to, and I you just can't. You just can't because there's so much to do. There were I think like 400 people, like 350, 400 people. I'm not exactly sure of of the final count number, but like guys. It, it was like the LARP Olympics. It, it, there were so many people from all over the country and international that came and it was like all styles of LARP all at once. And it was amazing. It was magical. It was absolutely magical. And um, God, I, I'm kind of at a loss for words to, to describe it because Dragonfest is very much a open world experience. Like you can do whatever you want, really, and you can change what you want to do at a whim. You can create plot for yourself and others just like that, and it's amazing. I I I myself have never been to an experience like this. Like I have traveled a lot for LARP, as you guys know. I have traveled the United States a lot for LARP and Canada for LARP, but like this, my God, there was just, I've just never experienced anything like this. And it was so fun and just honestly transformative, like for me, and I think for a lot of people. So I'm gonna start from the top, um, <laughs> cause I, there's just so much to cover. Um, I am clearly dressed as my character, Alicia Dura. Um, I, this is her like party outfit. So there was the bygone prom on Friday night. And this is where I debuted this dress, which is the dress that was made in collaboration with uh, Lady Grail Studios. So, you know, thank you so much, Lady Grail. You, this dress is beautiful. This is such a, this is such a beautiful dress and it has like removable sleeves and interchangeable sleeves, which is like so cool. And I utilized it a lot and it completely transformed the dress. But yeah, this was my outfit for uh, the prom and <sighs> being Alicia again, like putting on this costume, putting on this makeup. When I did it on, you know, Wednesday, you know, for opening ceremonies, there was this moment where I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> she's back. She's back. She's here. I'm playing her. And it was so fun and surreal. And I just, I was nervous. I was so nervous going to the opening ceremony. I think all of Silver was, which by the way, like Silver Camp, we were small. We were small. We, I think, were like 14 people. We grew over the course of the event. Like people came later and, and joined us on like Friday. And also like when characters died or defected from a camp, they, they came to us. So I think we ended with about like 21 people. 
but we were we were at 14 for at least the first like two days so it we were a smaller camp i think um shadow and silver were the two smallest camps and um i think maybe shadow was smaller by like one more person and everybody in silver was incredible like you guys were incredible and even though not a lot of us talked before game like we didn't really like chat too much on the forums like a little bit like i made a couple of posts here and there and asked about like what skills the spellcasters are taking or whatever but there wasn't too much like before game powwowing but we were cohesive we looked cohesive we were all wearing like white and black or like white black and silver you know um and even if there were characters that weren't wearing that there was enough of us in the group that were just like wearing white that the vibe was the vibe was there the vibe was absolutely there and i god it was just such such an amazing experience um the opening ceremony was like okay so, so this is really what happened is that we're all getting ready for the opening ceremony and we're all thinking like okay like gosh we're so small how are we gonna make an impression and uh there's this torch back here this is actually a prototype torch from an upcoming product from Calamasil where uh this torch will soon be available and there will be more info about it but for now this torch uh i took i took this torch i turned it on this is the ice setting and it has like a fire setting and a lightning setting and i was like okay we're gonna we're, we're gonna use this i'm gonna lead the way with it and um i i was like we should take the banner we should take the banner with us and like i assumed that everybody was gonna have the banner okay we we walk up the hill to go to the you know ritual circle and nobody has their banner and you know we're i'm leading the way with this like super crazy bright torch and it was like this moment where everybody everybody saw us and was like oh my god that's silver <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god that's silver wow <laughs> and we just stood there we were all like oh my god it's happening and so the thing is is that at, at dragon fest you have the opening ritual so the opening ritual is like where all the avatars come out and introduce themselves to basically the entire game and also the end they introduce themselves to each other so each avatar basically goes up to one another and based on the greeting that the avatar gives the other avatar is basically the the vibe the camps will have to towards each other so like if the um silver avatar went up to you know the green avatar and you know snub them or you know threatened them or 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 did something of the sort or shook hands with them that would kind of determine the vibe um and so it was it was it was really cool because like our avatar the silver avatar is supposed to be like the oldest one he's supposed to be like this really old really wise and all the avatars are like siblings they're all like brothers and sisters and um they're all you know this to them is basically like a family gathering to see who's the best sibling and using people from interdimensional fantasy universes to do it <laughs> that's that's basically what what this game is and it's so fun it's so fun and so um all of the uh, of all the avatars came in they introduced themselves the you know uh animosity or friendships between all the groups were kind of uh determined and whatnot um and then we were all sent back to our camps to kind of determine like who wants to do what um, so we get back and our avatar gives us this lovely speech um, about how we were all called here together and that, you know, there are rules that, you know, we must elect ourselves for. And so there was like basically a spy master, um, the diplomat, uh, I believe the like camp lead and I think like a general. Um, and each of those roles were like really important and they had weight behind them for the camp. Um, so me and another player named Vandalore, uh, that was their character name, um, Vandalore wanted to be a diplomat, I wanted to be a diplomat, so we were diplomats together, and, um, <laughs> it was very interesting, because we had a lot of ground to cover, because like I said, Silver's very small, 
So we make the decision that I will go to Green Camp and Blue Camp, which is just up the road, like ahead of us. Cause like Silver Camp had this basically like a hallway path out of it, like lined by trees. Um, and so I was gonna go to Green and Blue and then Vandalore was going to go to Red and Shadow. Now, I think, you know, on a meta level, everybody was a little nervous about Blue um, and Red because they were the two like absolutely largest camps. I think Red beat Blue only by like two or three people and Red had like 60 people in it. So it's like, you know, walking to a camp of like 58 people and it's just like, ha ha really hope I don't die. So um, Alicia, you know, determined to, you know, have peace across, across this land. Um, she went off, you know, and <laughs> as we are walking out of the camp, I bump into this guy. And I'm like, you there, like, who are you? And he introduces himself. He goes, oh, I, uh, I'm a, a blue diplomat. I was like, oh, excellent. Um, so you can show us to the blue camp. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I can, I can show you, I can show you to the, the, the blue camp. Now this, this character's name um, is Aelron. <laughs> and and we, we're gonna have a lot of stories uh, about Alicia and Aelron because um, maybe both me and Alicia are maybe not as good at social role play and diplomatic role play as I think and she thinks we are. So we will learn, there, there's much to tell here. So we walk over to blue camp first. So we actually have to pass green to get to blue and we're like, okay, it's fine. We'll just circle back around. So we, we go to blue and um, we get introduced and blue is like huge guys. It's huge. There are tents everywhere. There are people, they have their own tavern. Like they're vibing, there's music. And we're like, oh my, oh my God. <laughs> but the thing is, is that blue is really about like freedom and liberty. And so they were also like really chaotic. Like they couldn't, they couldn't really organize themselves really well because they were so chaotic. <laughs> like that's, that's, yeah, but, but they did have another diplomat. So Alicia was like, oh, great. So Blue has two diplomats. So, you know, she met Aelron. And then I believe the other diplomat's name uh, was Lottie. And uh, he, oh my God, this guy was an excellent role player. My God, he, his costume was so good. Like he just gave off sophisticated, like vibes. And we went, we went, we went to bat. So with me, um, I had uh, like th two or three guards and then we had a character. Oh my gosh, I am totally blanking on his name, but he came from the universe of New World Magiscola, which I think is like, that's so wild to me because like technically again, it's, it's fantasy, it's, it's wizard fantasy. So like that they can, the dude can exist. But he had like this deep, like he sounded like a Southern Baptist preacher, but he was talking about magic and he was like a magic lawyer. So I was like, great, magic lawyer's coming with me because I have to go to Blue and Blue's a bunch of snakes and, and I need him. So he basically was like my backup for, for my, <laughs> for what I was doing. Um, I had my pan on my back with me as well. I wasn't wearing this dress, I was wearing my other costume, but we go in and you know, we basically, uh, we, we talk. We talk for like probably almost an hour, like at, at least like 30 to 40 minutes. And um, we, we talk and me and Lottie come to like this really nice armistice agreement where like, oh, we should be, you know, not aggro to each other. We should definitely not be aggro to each other. We're neighbors, we're neighbors. And so we had come to the conclusion that like, even though we are, we're on the same path, but they're very far down. So to give each other mutual aid if they were attacked was like a little bit impossible, but we were going to like be, be chill to each other was basically our agreement. Um, and we walked out of there and we were like, wow, that went surprisingly well. <laughs> um, and then we walked to Green and, and Green was very happy to see us. Um, and actually I got to talk to the, di what, the Green Diplomat that was played by Matt Webb. And like Matt Webb, one of the creators of Jackalope who makes the night in question, oh yeah, baby, he came. And Matt was, Matt, you were so lovely. You were fabulous. It was so good to, 
role play with Matt outside of like a vampire environment and like see him do his thing. And he was a great diplomat. And so uh, we, we came to the agreement that we would also have an armistice with Blue because we are on the same path. And that um, because Green was way closer to Silver in terms of that path, that we would also uh, give them mutual aid. If we were getting attacked, Green will come to us. If Green was getting attacked, we will go to them and we would provide each other support. Um, we also had like, a, our agreement with Blue was also that we would kind of provide them support if they needed it. So we, we, had, we had all that. Um, then, you know, we come back, we regroup, and basically after the initial, like, pushes of diplomacy um, and everybody kind of getting their roles, we, we were kind of just able to kind of do what we wanted, um, which was really cool. And I believe I went back to Blue a little bit and, like, vibed there and then, like, went to bed. Um, I will say that this game is the first game I have gotten up before 11, like before 11 a.m. Like, I mean, ready, in costume, out the door by like 9 a.m., 10 a.m., the latest. Um, even eight o'clock in the morning, one of the days, I think I think on day two I got up at eight and I was out the door ready to play by like nine-ish, 9.30-ish. And it was, that's like, Okay, I'll be honest, all right? Like, I'm not a morning person, okay? So, like, I, it's really hard for me to function before, like, 11 a.m. <laughs> so, I, I, I'm i literally filming this at, like, 3.30 in the morning. So, th th I'm a, night, a nocturnal creature, I am. But, <laughs> you know, the next day was, wow. Like, Thursday was pretty crazy. Um, so, the thing was, is that, you know, Alicia figured that because... Uh, you know, she was kind of able to go around and talk to a lot of people. A lot of people recognized her from leading them through the mist. So she would basically pass off information to Vandalore. And Vandalore would then kind of be like, oh, okay, this is, you know, X, Y, or Z thing that I'll go do and make this agreement and whatever, whatever. And we would kind of report to each other. Now, the thing was too, though, is that Silver got spread a little thin because there wasn't many of us. So it was like... You know, I think a lot of people were scared that if we left our post, uh, we would just get totally ganged. But thankfully, it didn't. It didn't really happen. Um, but I basically walked around all day, like going to the tavern, kind of seeing the environments and whatnot. Um, the, the game site, like going back to uh, Camp Sack after ten years, was really. Well, it wasn't really 10 years. I, it had been 10 years since I had been there playing Alicia, but I used to play Dystopia Rising there too. Um, so it was more like, uh, like five years I had been there last, but like 10 years as this character. And it was so fun to like see how everything had changed. The tavern was was like beautiful and everything was, was absolutely lovely. So, you know, I, I went around, I spent a lot of time in the tavern uh, throughout the day and there was a food truck there too that she made like oh my god they made these um, like gyros is that how you say it hero gyro whatever potato potato um, they were great they had and that then that truck was there like all day uh, and it closed I think at like 9 p.m. so like you you had the option and the and the ability to get food basically like all day long which I thought was was very cool um, and the, and the prices were very fair and the, the food they gave you was very, they, they gave you a lot of food too. And you know, they would get to know you and, and, and stuff like that. But I, I had basically, I was going around on Thursday mostly just like doing diplomacy stuff. If I'm honest, I can't remember every instance, um, but there was an incident, the incident, um, where one of Blue Camp's members insulted our avatar but i think by calling him like the the shadow avatar which pissed him off um and we had to like find this guy and our avatar you know we we demanded justice and we were like your our armistice is at risk right now because you, this this man um insulted our avatar so why should we respect you or any of your wishes since you guys just like insulted our avatar i mean hello so the blue was like okay like we definitely don't want this to impact our relations we're gonna go find him and we'll parade him through the town and we will 
we will throw food at him and they did actually they they did throw food at him there there's like uh, a couple of pictures of him standing at like green camp and people throwing like stuffed food at him it was just it's it is absolutely fucking hysterical and so they arrest him essentially and bring him to silver camp and like all of blue camp is is there and um well a mass not everybody but like a massive group of blue camp is there including the blue avatar who of course is like yeah no you insulted my brother and you have to serve justice for this and i approve my brother dealing with you however he sees fit so um the silver avatar blinded this guy which repaired our relations with blue for now and uh, the, you know, the guy went off and I, I, I'm pretty sure that that character too. I don't remember. I don't remember the character's name, but he died quite a few times. And then eventually he died his final time and he had another character that he brought with him and he, that character joined silver. Um, and there were a lot of characters that, um, either like, I think we had somebody defect from like red shadow, um, blue and they, they joined us. Um, which I thought was like really cool that we were uh, such a cohesive unit or so true to our dragon's values where other players were like, damn, I made the wrong choice. <laughs> Which like, okay, I said in my video that silver camp will be best camp and it's like, none of you believe me. So whatever. But uh, <laughs> yeah, there, there, and like, there was a point where I was running around so much on Thursday where like I started to feel a little bit burnt out and I, I this is exactly what happened. I think it was around like 3-ish PM, 3.30 uh, or like 3.45 and I'm like, okay, you know what? I need to take a break. I need to take a nap because I'm, I'm gonna burn myself out otherwise. So I did, I went back and I was like, nobody disturb me, I'm sleeping. And thankfully, our cabin was the only one with air conditioning. So it was actually very nice to be at Silver Camp too. We did have air conditioning, which of course made us superior. Uh, I went to go take a nap for like three hours. And, and, and you guys. So like I had told, you know, Vandalore, uh, I, you know, I'm gonna go rest. You know, I trust that based on the information that we've shared with each other with the, di the, the diplomats and whatnot, that, you know, you will, you will enact on that as, as we need to, to maintain relations. Okay, my dudes, girl, I, I went to sleep for like two and a half hours, almost three hours, right? Like I literally was just in a fucking trance. I get up, it's like 6.30ish, you know, I, I refresh myself, so I get down there closer to seven. I go down the stairs of Silver Camp and there's four fucking banners there. We had four banners. We had our banner, red's banner, uh, blue's banner, and green's banner. And it was apparently a deal was made on on Vandalore, you know, Vandalore signed off on everything, which like power to fucking Vandalore because they were so great. Um, I was so imp I was like, oh, oh, okay, work. We have uh, banners, and so basically it was a massive armistice, and um, all of the diplomats had kind of come together, and we actually made agreements, and we have been, we were all keeping to them, and so. The agreement was, is that for each banner um, that we had, like the, each group would get a respective egg. The only banner that was an extra egg for everybody would be, cause we got an egg for having the banners in the camp, right? So we kept, we kept that egg. And then, you know, we would get a, we would get an egg per banner, but we would give the eggs to the camps that brought the flags to us. So like we would give red an egg, we would give green an egg, and you know, we would keep an egg. And then the blue egg that we got from the blue banner would be, we would hold a duel over it, which like, it was gonna be an, uh, an honor duel. And so um, <laughs> uh, we sent one of our warriors to, to do that. And I was like, tomorrow morning, that's what's gonna happen. I'm like, there's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. I'm like, tomorrow morning, we, we're, we're just gonna go and like give out these eggs as we said we would, because we are, you know, we're, we're the trustworthy ones. We are, we're not oath breakers. We keep to the deals that we've made. So we, we did, and we did, we absolutely did. And I made sure of it. So we hand out the eggs to each person, uh, to each camp, as we said we would, and the duel was met, was done, uh, 
for the egg. We lost, I think Red won the that egg. Um, and then everybody goes, which way? But we did hear that, um, you know, an armistice like that, you know, the dragons crave blood. So if we're not fighting, the universe starts to, un the universe that we're in, this pocket universe that we're all in, it will unravel, which we're all like, well, I guess we did our job too good and now the universe is pissed. So um, we, we were definitely not gonna be able to do an armistice like that again, which is fine. Um, and, and the thing was too, was that on um, Thursday night into Friday, it had rained. It had rained like a lot, like so, like the rain was ridiculous on um, Thursday night. Like it was so crazy. Like I had to go outside to go to the bathroom and it was like a typhoon like wet in 30, like soaked to the bone in 30 seconds, crazy rain. But that was like the only time it really rained during the event. So thankfully after that, the weather was, was really good. And the weather was good before that, but sadly th Thursday was rain day. Um, but yeah, uh, we, and I, and I spent some time, <laughs> I spent some time at Blue Camp on Thursday night as well. Like Blue Camp was really fun because they had a tavern and they would like party every night. So. You kind of were either like at the tavern partying or you were at blue camp partying. And so I definitely partied at blue camp on like Wednesday, Thursday. Um, Friday, Friday is when like, whew, everything came to a head and we were all getting like, oh God, like, you know, there was a lot of tournaments on, on Friday. So we had like the fighting tournament, which was really great. Um, it was a little long, but it was really good. And like everybody, you know, like Char our champion, Charlize, uh, actually from the world of Malleus, Charlize was there and um, Duke Roderick was there. There was actually so, there was a good chunk of players from Malleus um, that came and also Dameron. And it was just like so, it was so freaking cool to see these characters at different like, cause that's the thing is that you could be from the same world but a different point in that world. So there were people who were younger than their character actually is in the world right now. So um, like Sir Tristram from Dameron, uh, he had come and he was young, but we are in season three of Dameron right now, but he looked like he did in season two. So he looked like a young man, but season three, Sir Tristram is, is much older. Um, and so it's, it's just, it was just really, it was super cool. And, and it was such a really awesome way to like talk about our characters in the worlds that we're from in such a diegetic way where it didn't feel like, oh, let me tell you about my character. And I'm gonna make you sit down and hear about my dumb backstory for like 40 hours. No, it was actually really cool being able to ask questions and being like, well, this is how this works in my world. How does this work in your world? And, and really like discuss that. That was, that was like so much fun to do. Um, but, but Friday was like kind of the crazy day because, uh, oh my God, it was, it was pretty nuts. I got up, um, ate some breakfast, walked around, had a couple of conversations with people. And then I went to uh, the, mages, the Mages Guild classes, uh, which was very, very fun. And we lear I learned ritual magic. So like I could do rituals in the big ritual circle, not just at the ritual circle in silver, which was very, uh, which is very cool. And I also led the ritual to uh, make the ritual circle in silver, which was also very cool. I was like shitting my pants thinking that I was gonna do a terrible job and be really bad at it. But everybody said I did a great job. So thanks for the ego boost because man, oh man, I was just flying off the seat of my pants. But um, we, I, I am in class for the next class, which was actually the um, the shadow magic class in which you could learn how to cast faster. So casting, I think it like, it took a couple of minutes and like incantations and stuff like that. But with um, this spell, you could basically, ca like with this talent, you could basically cast instantly. And so um, of course, Alicia wanted to, to go and learn that because she had healing touch and she wanted to be able to administer that like boom as fast as possible uh, along with her, her first aid, uh, which I did have an hourglass, which is, oh my God, I'm sorry. It's like in my luggage still somewhere, which I haven't unpacked, but like wh whatever. Um, I had this hourglass, a five minute timer that that's what I would use to kind of um, keep track of, of my cooldowns and whatnot. But um, I'm in class. All of a sudden, the Brass Brigade, the, the cops, um, 
the most, a couple of people from the Brass Brigade, they come up to me, they go, Alicia, Lady Alicia. And I was like, yes, you, what, what, what's happening? I'm in the middle of class. Don't you see I'm learning? I paid five copper for this fucking class. And they're like, well, we were told to come get you. You are needed immediately at Green Camp. Something has happened. And I was like, oh God, oh my God. Okay, okay oh my God. All right, well, I gotta, I gotta go. So I get up, I rest in peace my education because I never went back and I never learned the damn skill. So rip me. But I ran away all the way to green camp and i'm like what is there's like a ton of people from blue in front of green camp and i'm like oh oh shit like we're about like something's about to go down like something's about to go down and i need to fucking fix it i get stopped by lottie and aileron in the path um and now aileron's pissed this dude's like you know Green has your flag and green has our flag and we want to return your flag to you and and green are these untrustworthy scoundrels because like to be fair, I, you know, it's impossible to know exactly what's going on at all points of the game. And there, it wasn't really like a in-game postal service where there was like a messenger runner that would run place to place with like messages and stuff. We don't have that yet, but you know, if, if you want to be that person to create that, um, that guild or whatever, you can definitely submit it to the team for next year because the postal service would be bomb. But, um, we... <laughs> Um, I, I, I'm like on the path and we're basically screaming at each other. I'm telling everyone, I'm like, well, you know, I, I have to go figure out what the situation is. And this dude is about to like pull out his swords, which Lottie is like, no, no, no violence, Aeron, no violence. And I'm like, how dare this man, you know, pull his, almost pull his swords on me, which, you know, I had my frying pan on my back. So of course I definitely would have, you know, kicked his ass and he knows it. All right. You, you know it. And, um, <laughs> I run over to Green, in which uh, Duke Roderick Davignon, played by my lovely boyfriend, Nathan, um, who was the Silver Second, um, he's there with Vandalore, and there's uh, Grim Song was there too, kind of, I think, standing guard. And I'm like, okay, I need to know what the hell is going on right now. Um, Vandalore kind of gives me the whole spiel. I, I wish that I had copies of all the, because we actually had to write down the agreements and had them signed and stamped. Like if an agreement was written down and signed and stamped, it was actually like legal within the game. Like we had, you could break it, but you'd be an oath breaker and that's, you really don't want to be that. So um, I wish I had all of them because I don't remember all of the terms exactly. But I know that basically green and silver, we were besties. We really were. There was nothing on earth that would change the fact that we were besties. And um, we uh, go, I, I, I go to Vandalore and they tell me kind of everything that's, that's going down. And the fact that like, so blue and green uh, basically hate each other and um, green took blue's flag in a siege. Um, and I think Blue thought that Green had sieged us and taken our flag when it was more like a, nah, you can have our flag and defend it because we can't defend it because we're like 10 people. <laughs> so you can take the egg and, and, and defend it for us and, and like, we'll do you a solid later. That basically was the, the deal. And so, but Blue had no idea about this. Blue is like, well, you know, we want to go and, and save your flag. And, and we're like, I'm like, no, nah, we don't need that. We don't need you, sorry. <laughs> like, sorry, so sorry, not sorry. We we don't need your help. But um, so yeah, I, I basically went back out to Aeron and Lottie and said as much that like didn't didn't need their help. Um, I go back towards the ritual circle to hope to God that my class is still going, which of course it's not. It is over. Which I was like, wah, wah. alas, the life of a diplomat. Um. So I, I went, I kept walking and I went over to uh, the bazaar. And I have to tell you, the bazaar was so cool. Kalamacil and Nemesis had like a joint giant tent together. It was beautiful. And like the in-game area that um, the Nemesis crew put together was like so insanely beautiful. It was so amazing, beautiful in every sense of the word. Um, you know, Veronique and Sebastian and, you know, Crimson Duchess and Inf Infernal Temptation, they, they came and, oh my god, bitch, they showed the fuck up. They really did. They showed up and they looked amazing. Their whole crew was incredible and I loved role playing with them. Yeah, so I, I go over there and the competitions are starting. So I'm like, you know what? Fine. I've been running around all day. I'm gonna watch the fighting competition because one of the things in the fighting competition was that if you were like cheering really loud, 
you you would like that would count for points for your uh, your champion. So Charlize was our champion that went in. So it was um, I think Charlize and Sir Tristram were in um, were in the fights, and there was like you know a mix of people from like blue and red and you know shadow and whatnot. Um, and and the fights were just. It was great. There was actually a panel of judges, and there were medics on standby. And and really got to give it to the people who played healers. I played a healer too, but there was like a surgeons team. Like it was like a group of surgeons, and that's what they did. They were aligned with the bazaar, and they were surgeons, and they were phenomenal, absolutely wonderful. They had the great props, great role play. Like kudos to that whole group. Um, and they had blood and and a lot of players were really cool about like yeah Yeah, put blood on my costume like I want to look nasty and gross which like hell yeah, dude um, And so every time a battle was over, you know one of the the, the medics with the, the the fighter that got You know injured the most would would sit in the medic chair and they would get fixed and the other uh, would get fixed and It was it was really cool. It's just this fight ring and so the rules were is that I think you had um two or three fights there was a lot of fights so i kind of i kind of lost track but um charlise uh i think got to the final round and and unfortunately she lost but we cheered for her every step of the way she won her first fight which like i lost my mind i'm like Wah! like there's so many photos of me just like Wah! like screaming and like waving this thing i had this veil on too i had this like hood and veil on um and I was like screaming and waving my stuff around, cheering for Charlize. And um, when she won her first her her first uh, fight, I went over and I congratulated her and fought and, and hugged her. And I know I know you guys probably saw my video where I talked about my sword back here being the sword of the silver champion. We actually made that happen. That actually happened. So Charlize wielded the sword of the silver champion, and it was super freaking cool. And it was it was really great to see this like weapon that I had custom made at Calumsil that I put together and everything like be made like that. It was just it just be used like that. It was just like so, it was just so cool. It was it was really awesome. And and Charlize was amazing. You were absolutely absolutely phenomenal. Like at every at every step, Charlize was the silver champion and and upheld that phenomenally um and we really cheered her on we cheered sir tristram on too um he lost his battle so nobody from silver uh won uh i believe it was a really awesome gent from shadow camp that won but yeah it was just it was just so just just so great like the fighting was so great but after the fighting there was a costume competition and now um <laughs> Uh, Friday during the day was the day for like my sassy costume and so I had I had the little skin showing ooh la la and I was like okay I'm definitely going into the costume competition like this is this is the time and so there were like three category or four four categories or maybe even five. Oh, you you had like best monster, best represent interpretation of fantasy, uh, best like craftsmanship, um, best like and I think like best materials or something like that. Um, and so there were different categories. So there, you know, for people who bought costumes or made costumes or whatever, there was there was all of that. So I go out there and um, it was it was kind of scary because you you like it was basically like walking a drag runway, which that's like the fantasy. That was like the delusion I had in my mind was that I was on RuPaul's Drag Race and I was I was presenting myself in front of RuPaul, and that's like that's all I said to myself because otherwise I just like I would have blacked out. <laughs> so I I walk forward and I have my my pan holster and I show my pan in the pan holster and then I take it out and I say something like I can be your greatest fantasy and I do a cool ballet move and then um, I, I walk back and you know a, a lot of people went in and it was just it was it was really cool um, that you you would be a winner of all of there would be a winner in each category and then an overall winner so um, you know I'm sitting there and I'm like super I'm like oh best warrior that was the other one best warrior costume um, so I was like super nervous I was like okay like I don't know if I'm Let's see, and I, I won Best Fantasy, which led my clothes to being enchanted. So I had a free, no cost, no cooldown spell use of Healing Touch, but it was attuned to my clothes. So if somebody stole the card, effectively I was naked. So. Let's hope nobody steals the damn card, all right? Don't steal the card. <laughs> so I, I win, we cheer, we go back, but like at this point, 
you know, we were, Silver was like really pushed to its limits functionally as a camp. Cause we had, it's like we had to be everywhere at once. There was always fires to put out between all the different camps and to keep relations healthy. There was also this really great moment because Infernal Temptation is a fire breather and he performed during uh, the opening and closing ceremonies, but he would also perform throughout like the, the week. And so uh, right before the costume competition, it was kind of like an intermission and he was like letting people feel the fire of the dragon. And um, <laughs> I go up and he smiles at me because like off game, me, Crimson Duchess, Infernal and T Temptation and like all the Nemesis and Calico were all like actual friends. And so <laughs> he smiles at me and I'm like, I'm like, ah, and he's like, oh, come on, are you scared? And I was like, okay, bullying me. And so I go out into the into the ring, and this man, just to spite me, he gets on his knees so that he's like my height because I'm a short little baby person, and then he blows the flame, which of course scares the living. It, it felt like like the the heat is so strong for that second. You're like ah, uh, which was very funny, and he laughed at me. But whatever, meanie. He was also a vampire that could walk. Uh, around in the sun, which caused a, there was a big hunt for him at one point, And I had to tell a like six foot three Australian man that was part of the referee team, but would occasionally play. And he would play silver and he was like a paladin. I had to yell at him not to kill him. And like, again, mind you, he's like literally like a foot taller than me, if not more. So I'm like screaming up at this man, telling him to stand down because if you killed any of the bazaar people, you would become persona non grata, your whole camp would be. And you basically would be denied all services from the bazaar and you guys would not be welcome there, which is like, you don't want that. Like that is really bad. Blue was like, they became a persona non grata at one point and man oh man, that bit them in the ass. So, um, I also think I forgot to mention, God, I'm sorry. I'm like trying to recount this as best I can. Um, we also got raided by Blue on Friday morning, the bastards, and they they, they took our flag, jerks. Um, <laughs> but um, Friday was really busy. Um, so yeah, after, after that, um, Silver came together and we kind of like regrouped. Um, and then we all just like got ready for the prom. So it was called the Bygone Ball. Um, and we, it was, it was hosted, um, at the bazaar and we were all like, okay, like, oh, it's dance night. So I, this is where I donned this outfit and I, I had, um, one of my sleeves attached and, and whatnot. And it was, it was really fun. Um, oh my God. I think Alicia got asked one, two, three, four, five times. She got asked five times. Um, which was which was really fun and it was really fun to, to play with. Um, we go down to me and Vandalore basically um, are hanging out together and we as the diplomats go to because like there was other stuff that you could attend but we figured okay all the diplomats are coming to the bygone prom it'd be a good moment for us all to sit down and like get along with each other and kind of clear up any misunderstandings again and <laughs> um, so we went down there and there was this there was another competition and it was called the panache competition and it was like about how you upheld yourself and how like the make of your costume and everything like that and it was it was really cool it was really fun to do and it was um it was actually run by nemesis and if you won you won a like coupon to um artisans de Zur, and i think also nemesis as well um it was it was super fun i went i did my thing i lit my torch up i was I was like the third person to go. And so of course I was like shitting my pants the whole time. Um, but people clapped and it was very sweet. Thank you guys all for clapping. I, it, and it's funny too, because like you guys will see in the footage, um, there are shots with me with like this massive glass of wine. And I mean like filled almost to the top. You, mommy was stressed, okay? You know. Mom, mommy needs a drink. And there was this whole thing with um, the sheriff who was Captain Erasmus, who was the great, 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 great grandson of Captain Rasmus from Malleus. The Rasmus that I talk about in my video. That's right. He's like great, 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 great. Like so way far in the future of Malleus. It's um, a descendant of, of Rasmus. So Erasmus has this cock. I, I mean, it's a, a rooster. It's a, it's a rooster. <laughs> it's a rooster. And um, they both, both uh, Sir Roderick and, <laughs> and the sheriff are going around holding this, um, holding this, this cock. And 
it was a symbol of uh, the unity between the two. Um, it was it was very sweet. We're all waiting waiting for the wedding vows. I ship it personally. Uh, it was hysterical. It was put in the paper because like there was a ton of defamatory shit in the paper about Lord, um, Duke Roderick. Like it was so funny reading the newspaper roasting my boyfriend every damn day. Oh my God, it was so funny. And I wish, I really, really, really wish I had the papers so that I could like read them, read them back to you. Um, I, I think they have still have not been released yet by the team. Um, but if I have any resources to have you guys go read the papers, they're going to be down below. Cause it was like, it was really, the, the, some of the articles, there was like Milk Lovers Anonymous and like Dragon Fuckers Anonymous. It was just like some of the, really funny. Like the, the, the articles that were written were actually hysterical. Kudos to the entire team. And um, LARP Ever After was there as well. And she was writing on the team. So thank you so much, Victoria. You were fabulous, girlfriend. And so, he had all these like defamatory things, basically calling him homophobic, which was really funny because he's 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 not. But um, he so in, in in order to dispel these rumors, he he did an act of holding a, a cock with another man, which you know was the rooster statue. It was a rooster statue. Um, it was hysterical. Um, gosh, what happened after that? Then I I hung out down by uh, the Nemesis tent for a while, and I, I had such a wonderful time role-playing with that crew, and they're all just, they're all just super, super amazing, like, just in in incredible people. Love, love role-playing with them. Um, so there was, a, there was a competition in Nemesis, in the Nemesis tent, in Nemesis Cali tent, where people could fight and whatnot, and I see Aileron there. And so I sit next to him, and I'm like, okay, time for some diplomacy because the grand battle was the next day and I wanted to make sure that blue blue is our biggest threat on the field because we knew that green would have our back or so we thought um, and so I was like okay I have to secure blue I have to secure blue that they won't attack us on the battlefield or we are so screwed so I am basically grilling Aileron I am grilling Aileron I am like, uh, I don't even remember, but there was a lot of banter. There was so, there was so much banter, but eventually I get him to agree to an armistice that we will not, that silver and blue will not attack each other on the battlefield and we will give each other support. Like if we saw blue people down, if silver saw blue people down, we would go and help them. And um, we did have the agreement that if it came down to, you know, like green and silver and blue that like, you know, this, this would be null and void. Like we would have to attack each other through the nature of war. So, and, but there would be no ill feelings about this. So um, I, and I told him, you best have this written on paper and bring it to silver at 10 a.m. tomorrow, 10 a.m. on the dot. And again, grilling this dude. And he's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. And I was like, okay, it's a deal. We we shake hands and this dude makes me pinky promise. Elrom makes me pinky promise and y'all know how serious that is, okay? So I, I, I pinky promise and <laughs> um, I go to bed. Okay. I go to bed. And uh, I wake up the next day. Hey, you wanna know when I don't wake up? I don't wake up at 10 a.m. Oh, no, 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 no. I wake up at 1045 and I felt like human garbage. Cause I, and he came, Aileron came to make this tree with Alicia. He came and he got turned away and told to come, be, come back at like 11, 1130, which I was like, oh my, oh my fucking God. I made this man, I grilled this man for all this bullshit diplomacy and I overslept. And so like, I got ready at the, speed of sound, the absolute speed of fucking sound. And I, I go downstairs and he does, he comes back. He comes back, which I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I invite him inside because we have air conditioning because we are the best camp. And I sit him down at the table, I offer him tea. I go upstairs, I make tea with our like kettle and whatever. And I, I bring it down and we are about to discuss the, like the, the treaty. It's like, I open my mouth to discuss the treaty and like the silver avatar like 
bursts in screaming and his face is now like a dragon face like he has this dragon mask on it is insane he looks incredible but he's also fucking terrifying and Aaron's just like mm, uh, is this a bad time and I was like no we're just gonna we're just gonna go outside we're just we're just gonna go outside it's fine we're just we're just we're just gonna go outside so we we go outside and we're sitting at the table and um, as Duke uh, uh, as the Duke was there, uh, as Roderick was there as witness and we basically negotiate out the terms. And Aaron leans over. He goes, "Okay, so now that we're besties," and I'm like, "Yes." He goes, "I have to tell you something." I'm like, "Okay." And he goes, "I've lied to you," and I went. What? And he's like, yeah, um, you see, I, I'm not a diplomat. And I was like, you're, you're, you're not? And he's like, N no, um, I'm the spy master. Oh my God. Oh my God, he was the blue spy master. I was hanging out with the blue spy master, who I later found out was a murderer. He was an assassin who killed people, many people, okay? And that, like, like, okay, like, I could have died multiple times with this man, all right? The, the, uh, Aileron could have killed Alicia at any point when they were talking and doing diplomacy and walking around and, like, dumped her in a bush, and, and she never would have been the wiser. I never would have been the wiser. On an out-of-game level, I literally thought that this guy, I thought that Aileron was seriously the other diplomat, because Silver had two diplomats, and I don't know, my dumb brain just assumed that every camp had two diplomats, because Green had two diplomats. No! Blue only had one, and it was Lottie. It wasn't fucking Aileron, which makes so much sense because Lottie was very smart. And I'm like, oh my god. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm an idiot! I'm a fucking idiot! I No wonder everybody, because like, I would hang out with Aileron, and everyone's like, you, sh you sure about, about that, Alicia? And I'm like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Okay, no, my dumb ass had no idea what I was doing whatsoever. So... <laughs> Aaron admits this to me. I'm in shock and awe. I I, I am appa I'm appalled. I'm I'm shattered, disgusted. No, it's okay. We, we signed the damn treaty. And meanwhile, while we're signing the treaty, the silver the silver avatar is uh we had they had come back uh for from a ritual to create wrath to make silver feel wrath. So the silver dragon was done being this val valor driven thing and there was wrath um and so me and vandalore were the two people that chose not to take the wrath that we didn't want the um the anger the vial of wrath so we decided to become the mercies which meant that if anybody from silver was enacting their wrath we could call mercy and that wrath would would stop but only if we called it or or threw ourselves in front of the target we <laughs> We're like, we're like sitting there and the silver dragon screaming like, pleasure, pain, pleasure, pain. Like while putting his hand on people's faces and they're like screaming bloody murder and Elrond's just like, great. Um, I really want to sign this contract and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and, and he did, oh man, he signed that contract and he ran back to blue camp and was like, oh God, silver's really scary. Um, which was to me very, very funny. And so at this point, we're all just getting ready for uh, the big battle. Um, I, you know, I, I get my, my little orb ready because I, I could do energy field, uh, which was, you know, basically it's an impenetrable force field as long as you keep swinging this orb above your head. Um, and I was also gonna be on the medic team. Um, and the way the battlefield was broken up was that it was green and silver next to each other, blue and shadow next to each other, and then just fucking red. <laughs> it's like, just red. Um, the, the great battle happened. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, ma making the march, I was actually super nervous, we all were. We were all really nervous, we were all so scared. But we lined up and we looked amazing. We looked powerful, we looked like we were full of valor ready to fight for our 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 dragon now the thing is with the with the grand battle is that it doesn't determine who's like the overall winner of the event but it does give uh dragon eggs so first second and third place each get dragon eggs so um to our shock and surprise shadow and blue are the first two camps to be out 
um, which was it was very shocking and, and it was a massacre out there like blue was was getting fucked up by red and green and so they were fighting a two front war um, so rip rip uh, blue and and uh, and shadow and so they get put into the, the the avatars walk to the the ritual circle so then it's you know green red and silver um, there was this moment where somebody from Red, some sneaky evil bastard from Red made, just made up this lie. Made up this lie that, it, it, like, seriously, it actually, like, for those of you who played the game and are watching this, it actually wasn't true. Like, it just wasn't true. Um, somebody from Red had made up this lie that Silver had broken an oath with Red and that, that they were look, they, they were seeking to bro break their oath with Green. And, um... I don't know who in green was like, okay, yeah, that sounds legit. It didn't. It wasn't true. We were your besties. We had been, we had been defending you the entire week, and you do us like this. So, all of a sudden, red fucking charges us, and we're like, oh, oh my god. Of course, me. I'm sitting there. Arrows are trying to hit me, and I'm like, no, no, no. Can't hit me. I have cool energy field, and it was really cool. And I, um, I will completely 100% admit this to into the public that I trained, I trained with my trainer to do this motion for as long as possible. Like I'm not even joking. My arm was very buff, and to the point where one of the security guards, um, when I finally took it down, they were like, wow. That was actually very impressive how long you swung that damn thing. And I was like, thank you very much. And I did it a couple of times, I had, but I had to like wait for my cooldown. I had the hourglass. Um, unfortunately, Silver Falls, and we are third. We are third, so, which is actually really impressive for us being like a, the small, one of the smallest groups. Like that was pretty cool. And it was, it was something that was, that was full of valor to us. Um, and then it came down to uh, green and red. And I believe, um, I believe it was red that one, I think. I think it was red that one. Um, but there was actually a tie for the amount of eggs. Cause that was really like what, what would determine uh, the winner is the amount of eggs that your camp had. And, and we had a decent amount of eggs cause you could get eggs from doing like quests that pertain to your camp or like quests, like other quests or a quest that, um, that like you could get rewarded in an egg or you could trade eggs or you could have, use eggs in rituals, yada, yada, yada. And if you had five eggs, it, those five eggs would get replaced with a, uh, a golden egg, uh, to represent the five that you had. And then you would keep gathering more. So I believe that green and red had uh, the same, the same, um, whatchamacallit, uh, amount of, of eggs. So when the closing ceremony came, I believe there was a duel that had to take place. Now, um, all the duels that took place were, like, the, the duel between green and red for who won, it was actually decided, um, I think, through, like, something like rock, paper, scissors. And, and so the, the players, you know, did rock, paper, scissors, and whoever won that won. Um, but they still had like a show to put on. So they still fought in front of everybody and whoever won, you know, would win that battle, et cetera. Um, and so with that, uh, Red Camp was the first ever winners of Drakenfest US, which it doesn't mechanically do anything. It's just kind of like an ego boost and um, all of the bizarre flags will be red next year because, because Red Camp won, which like, okay, fine, well played. But, <laughs> Um, and, and, the, and the closing ceremonies were, they were really, really touching. All the avatars came out again. Everybody like cheered and lost their minds and it was really sweet. We all each had little phrases for our camp. So ours was uh, never tarnish and for the light. So for the light and never tarnish. Um, and it, I think uh, Blue had summoned this crab. So there was this joke of like never garnished, which was kind of like silver and blues, like hee hee ha ha, we're okay guys call. Um, but yeah, it was it was really great, and um, you know the the staff had a really sweet closing ceremony, and they 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 congratulated everyone, like all of the seconds, all of the referees, and they called them up. Um, they called up PR and marketing, so I got to go up and like wave and and, and whatever, and it was so I mean I cried, I cried, I gave everybody a big hug, and I was like, oh my god, we did it! Ah! Like, we did it! <laughs> we did the 
happened! The Dragon Fest happened! And it was great! It was so fun! And like, we all had this moment of just cheering. It was just, oh my god, it was so beautiful. Um, and then after that, there was um, a really great Fire Whip performance from um, Infernal Temptation. And then after that, it was just kind of like, all right, go party. So um, I got dressed in my dress again, and I wore these flowy sleeves that I have. And I, I went to go party. <laughs> and I, I went to the tavern, I hung at the tavern, and then there was like this lower bazaar area called the Bakro. Alicia and Jack Package, um, but they talked a lot. It was really cool, and um, they shared in their philosophies. And we walked down to Blue Camp together after hearing Charlize's amazing recounted tale of her being an amazing champion. And with all, oh, complete with music and, and violin and fiddle, it was very cool, and guitar. Um, and I go down to Blue, and it was just, it was so, going down to Blue was like, it was crazy guys like it was there's so much joy it was just a it was just a party it was really just an awesome party everybody was just vibing in like the best way possible and it was just like actually good vibes like all around one of my lights keeps dying rest in peace if it dies it dies alicia got to have her dance with one of the elves that she promised to dance with. Uh, he was lovely. She talked with Aelron, um, and they they joked and settled their differences. And um, it was so great, because the blue camp was very sweet with drinks, and everybody was like trying to make me this like tasty drink. And so they'd be like, no, Alicia, tell us what you like. We'll make it for you. And it was just, it was just really awesome. Everybody was so, so cool. And it was just joyous celebration. And that was the game. The next day you wake up and it's over and we packed our stuff. And it was, it was incredible. Like, you wanna know how it was Drakenfest? It was incredible. And you should come next year, for sure. And you should be part of Silver Camp, of course. I know that this video is like really, really long, but like I wanted to tell you what my experience was like. You know, I think every first game always has its kinks. There were definitely some things that could have gone a little smoother or things that could have been clarified a little bit more. But like, you know, it, it was it's for, for a first game, I have never gone to a LARP where its first game ever run was just so amazing, so flawless, so incredible. Like honestly and completely, the staff, you guys, you guys killed it. You guys killed it, you guys really, really did. It was so fun. And I cannot, I seriously cannot wait to go back next year. I, I know this is like kind of a watered down uh, tales of events, but I'm really recounting it the, the best that I can. And I hope that you guys enjoy looking at, at all the footage, but yeah. So how was Dragonfest? Incredible. Thank you guys so much. It's been a joy working with the Dragonfest team. I can't wait to work with them again next year and do the trailer and everything. And I'm just, I'm, I'm really happy to be working with this team. Thank you guys so much for the opportunity. It means everything to me. It really does. And I think it was so beautiful to see so many diverse people there, both in race, gender, everything. It was just, it was beautiful. And you could really see that everybody felt comfortable just being themselves and they felt safe and able to do so, and that, that's incredible. Because we, we have never had something like that in LARP, not really, not on this scale, not here in the US. And just seeing people from Canada, and Israel, and Australia, and Germany, and the UK, like all come over and, and, and help us, and, and, and play with us was just, it was beautiful. It really was. It was so great. And thank you to every single person that I interacted with. You guys were all so, so amazing. I interacted with like hundreds of people, so I'm really sorry if I don't remember every everybody's name or if I don't, you know, talk about every single thing that happened. And that, but like, all of you, all of you were seriously, seriously amazing. I. I had so much fun. I really did. I really did. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll see you guys as Alicia next year. All right? 
So there we go. That's my overview. That's what I did. That's what happened. Hell yeah, Drakenfest. That was our Drakenfest. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you next time.